So lab-grown meat is in the news again because Singapore just became the first country to actually grant regulatory approval for the commercial sale of the first lab-grown meat product. So let's talk about this. Hey friends, Serena here. Welcome back to my channel. There is a lot going on in the news and in the space of lab-grown meat and the technology and science surrounding it. So I've made a couple videos in the past talking about this. You can check those out up here and I've also linked them in the description below where I go way more in depth. Uh, there's even a, an hour long or more panel that I was part of at a vegan conference that goes really in depth into all of my thoughts on lab grown meat and the science and ethics of it. Today I'm just gonna give you a little bit of a short update and share my thoughts on the latest iteration of this process. So last week when I started seeing all of the headlines and news articles about Singapore approving lab-grown meat, the first thing I wanted to know is what kind of cells is Eat Just, the company that's making the lab-grown chicken that was just approved, what kind of cells are they using? What kind of medium are they using? Is this really any closer to being truly animal-free and something that I would be less opposed to? Or is it still relying extensively on the use of animals, animal products, and animal exploitation? And at first, I didn't really see that. A lot of the headlines were just like, animal-free meat, slaughter-free meat. And unless you dig deeper, that may not be what's actually going on. And then I came across this Guardian article, and when I read through it, it had a little bit more detail. So I wanna kind of read that with you and share my thoughts on it. Now, I'm not gonna read the whole article. And it mentions, of course, there are dozens of firms working on this, Eat Just is just, one of the first that's actually achieved this step. And Eat Just, for those of you that don't know, is the company formerly known as Just and formerly known as Hampton Creek that produces um, the Just Egg product and Just Mayo. So this says, the cells for Eat Just products are grown in a 1200 liter bioreactor and then combined with plant-based ingredients. As far as I'm aware, no company has overcome the hurdle of actually growing, you know, like a full steak that has the consistency and structure of a pure slab of meat. The reason they're starting with chicken nuggets right now is because those are more of a minced or crumbled or, you know, something that, that is a little bit easier to achieve and doesn't require the full texture and consistency of a pure slab of meat. But interestingly, they note in this article that they're actually combining it with plant-based ingredients right now. So this isn't even pure lab-grown meat. They're mixing like some cell-grown flesh with some plant-based ingredients. It's only gonna be in one restaurant right now, so this isn't even being rolled out to stores or anything. And they don't mention exactly how expensive this particular product is going to be, but they do admit that it's significantly more expensive than conventional chicken until scaled up. But the thing I've noticed about Eat Just is they have come out with lots of promotional and over-exaggerated claims about this product. In fact, there were several articles back in 2018 claiming that they would be rolling out their chicken nuggets and lab-grown meat um, back by the end of 2018. So that's almost two years ago now. So I'm very skeptical of these grand claims of how something will be in the future when that's not the case right now. And it may be true, but it may not be. And I think these companies need to be held accountable for these types of claims when we're talking about something, and I'll get to this, that actually still involves animal exploitation. So this article goes on to say, the cells used to start the process come from a cell bank and did not require the slaughter of chickens because cells can be taken from biopsies of live animals. So I'm a little unclear whether Eat Just like purchased some commercial cell lines from a cell bank or whether it's a cell bank they created by taking biopsies from living animals. And there isn't more detail on exactly what type of cells these are. I'm going to guess, based on the literature and studies that I've read, that these are probably um, muscle stem cells that are being taken via a biopsy from a living chicken. Uh, not a feather, as the company also claimed in some promotional materials several years ago. To my knowledge, they are using biopsies from living animals, claiming that they're treating them well and they are under anesthesia when they take a small piece of their flesh to then extract cells from. So that's the first really important point that I wanna make here. This is still exploiting animals. And until there is any consistency or published documentation of companies like this that are producing this, with an immortal established cell line that is completely free of any future animal uh, extracts or animal flesh, 
then that is not vegan and that is still animal exploitation. The nutrients supplied to the growing cells were all from plants. So what they're probably talking about here are the sugars, the glucose, the amino acids, all things that have to go into a liquid medium that these cells draw nut nutrients from. Because normally when cells are actually in a full being or animal, we have a blood supply circulating that is bringing nutrients and the necessary components for cells to continue growing and replicating. So in a laboratory in vitro setting, we have to artificially give those components to the growth medium that the cells are basically living in. And so they're saying here, which I thought was really cool, that they are all plant-based ingredients. However, then they go on to say, the growth medium for the Singapore production line includes fetal bovine serum, which is extracted from fetal blood. This is largely removed before consumption. So even though they just said, and if I hadn't been reading this closely, I would have missed it, that all of the components that they're feeding the cells with are plant-based, they do mention that there's fetal bovine serum still being used. And fetal bovine serum, which I've mentioned again in my previous videos, is basically baby cow blood that when pregnant mother cows are brought to the slaughterhouse and sometimes down and they have a nearly full-term fetus or not fully uh, developed baby cow, a needle is actually inserted into that baby cow's heart and then their blood is drained. And it's extremely painful, excruciating, prolonged death for that baby cow. So that is fetal bovine serum, and that is atrocious, and I don't really care whether it's like in the final product or not. It's not just about me not wanting to eat it, which that also is gross. I don't want that being done, and I don't want that being done in the name of a product that is supposed to help animals. So this is still currently relying on this. The product that is being sold in a restaurant in Singapore is being grown using fetal bovine serum. However, the article does go on to say, a plant-based serum would be used in the next production line, the company said, but was not available when the Singapore approval process began two years ago. So I hope that Eat Just is right when they say this. However, given some of their past claims, which have been hard to verify, considered trade secrets, and they haven't been publishing or having any of their data and their process peer reviewed because they're of course claiming it's proprietary, it's very hard to fact check their claims and know for sure what they're using. And so they're just expecting us to take them on their word that next time around when they expand or do a new line of this, it will be using a plant-based serum then at some point. And when I went through the literature on um, in peer-reviewed studies of what alternatives there are to fetal bovine serum, because a lot of people talk about this and have wanted a plant-based or just cheaper alternative for many, for sort of food grade type products like this cell culture. One of the things I noticed is that there's lots of pig and cow extracts and other things that just aren't fetal bovine serum, but still extensively rely on animal exploitation and extracting animal products from them. They just don't require the animal to be killed. So that's what I've seen in the literature are a lot of the alternatives that are being used for tissue regeneration. So plant-based, it seems, has not really happened yet. There's nothing published in the literature that I've been able to find. And so we're just going with Eat Just claims here that in the future, this is going to be the case. And while I hope they're right, I don't think that justifies vegans supporting a product that is currently still exploiting animals. One of the other major concerns that I have had as I've been looking into the lab-grown meat issue are the carbon emissions and environmental toll that lab-grown meat will take. We know that plant-based has a significantly lower footprint across all areas, whether it's land use, carbon emissions, water consumption, just general efficiency of resource use to produce satisfying plant proteins and calories for people to eat. And so, so animal production, right, is really bad. Plants, much more efficient, much more sustainable. But then lots of the claims around lab-grown meat have been that it will be much lower in carbon emissions and much more sustainable as well. And I've been very skeptical of this because I saw how cells were grown in the past when I was working in cell biology labs myself. 
I grew them, and there were so many factors that go into keeping cells alive in sterile culture. They still use, actually, antibiotics. It's not an antibiotic-free process in most cases. They are grown in these incubators where you have to keep the humidity at a certain percent. You have to keep the temperature at a certain exact temperature, and it's different for different cells. And you have to keep CO2 levels at an exact uh, specific percentage in this environment as well. And any variation from that, you can risk killing off the cells. And these incubators are incredibly resource intensive. They're just not generating, you know, methane and carbon emissions from animals because they're running off of the electric grid. So that's been a concern of mine. But the reason I bring that up is because going on in this article, um, they actually address that. The small scale of current cultured meat production requires a relatively high use of energy and therefore carbon emissions. But once scaled up, its manufacturers say it will produce much lower emissions, use far less water and land than conventional meat. So they actually admit in this article that currently it has a relatively high energy use. They don't tell us how much, there's no numbers or anything here, and that's something that I will continue looking into and update you on at some point. But I am extremely skeptical, and even if they're able to make it more efficient and scale this up, I still, uh, I still do not believe that there is any way that the, the environmental and energy and carbon footprint of lab-grown meat will be as competitive or as low as plant-based products are. The article mentions a recent report from the global consultancy A.T. Kearney, I don't know who they are, and that someone from that firm, Gerdhart, said he expected cultured meat would replace cuts of traditional meat, but that plant-based products, which were less expensive, were more likely to replace burgers and sausages. I don't know what this consultancy firm is, I'll have to look into that, but I think this is really interesting that we are seeing, again, um, folks admitting that plant-based meats are already way cheaper and they're getting better in taste and replication of, you know, animal-based products, and therefore those probably are still gonna be here and that will be cheaper, more accessible, and that lab-grown meat is not going to be the solution across the board. And then the final thing that I wanna talk about with this article is that the Secretary General of the International Meat Secretariat, which represents the global meat and livestock industry, so of course they had to talk to someone from the other side, agreed that this was a significant moment, but went on to say, that we believe the market potential for cultured meat is vast, as consumers in general continue to show great enthusiasm for the taste and nutritional benefits of animal products. Of course, our view is that real animal products will better meet these needs, but healthy competition is welcome. So one of the claims that I've seen from the clean meat industry is that the reason clean meat is going to be so good or so much better, sorry, clean meat, lab grown meat, same thing, that the reason it's so much better and that we should put so much energy into it uh, rather than focusing just on plant-based meat, for example, is because it's gonna be exactly like real meat. It's going to have the taste, the texture, the consistency, the protein, the nutritional value, all of these things. And so therefore, you know, consumers will want it and they won't know the difference. And I think when we see folks from the meat industry that are clearly sort of pushing back and saying, oh, we are distinguishing. It is not real meat. It is not going to be marketed the same way. We are still gonna promote real meat as being better to meet the nutritional and, you know, taste values that consumers have we can see that this isn't just going to seamlessly fit into the marketplace and solve the issue of animal slaughter. There is a whole industry that I think is incredibly attached to raising and killing animals, and they are not going to support this or quickly jump on board just because it's an alternative protein. They have their way of doing things with real animals, and I guarantee you they're gonna fight like hell, just like they've been fighting against, you know, labeling plant-based products as milk and dairy and these things. I guarantee you they're gonna bring that fight up with these products as well. So there's still a long way to go, lots of hurdles, both in the consumer marketplace and technologically to scale this up and with efficiency. The final point that I want to make here, one of my fundamental issues with lab-grown meat, is that when vegans jump on board, or animal advocates and those advocating for animal liberation promote a product like lab-grown meat, we are in essence admitting that 
meat is essential. We're never going to convince people otherwise. We are admitting that people are never going to go vegan. We are admitting that, um, that we're not going to argue against the idea of eating animal flesh. And this really doesn't challenge the fundamental underlying notion of animal exploitation and of speciesism, which I think is crucial if we want to achieve a, a vegan world. If we really want people to take animal liberation seriously and to stop hurting and stop exploiting animals, then we have to address those fundamental underlying issues. And plant-based meats are different because they're not real animal flesh. So even if they're, you know, still just a consumer product in the marketplace and they aren't, you know, somehow actively promoting animal liberation, they're still at a root level challenging the idea that we have to eat animal products. They're saying you can eat plant proteins, you can get all the nutrients you need, you can get, you know, all the satisfaction, the taste without real animal flesh. Lab-grown meat, on the other hand, is basically saying, yeah, we totally admit that plant-based meats are not the same, that you want real animal protein, real animal flesh, and that we are okay with taking biopsies from living animals at our will because we want to. We're putting them under anesthesia for a process that has absolutely no benefit or reason for that individual to undergo. It's totally because humans have decided we like the taste of meat and we don't want to give it up. So when we promote lab-grown meat, we are facilitating and supporting this idea and not at all challenging the fundamental issues of animal use. So for all of those reasons, I don't ever plan to eat lab-grown meat, whether it becomes animal-free or not. I think there are huge health issues with meat. And I'll just say this for those of you that maybe don't fully uh, know my perspective on this channel yet. I am very holistic. And while I am fundamentally advocating for veganism from an animal liberation, anti-speciesist perspective. I also care deeply about environmentalism, sustainability, and human health. And I think that eating a plant-based diet and ending animal use and exploitation can have huge benefits across all of those issues. And that's what I'm advocating for. So I'm not going to advocate for technological solutions that will likely harm humans in this process, promoting heart disease, cancer, diabetes, if there's still animal protein and still animal flesh. And that may or may not be more sustainable, we have yet to see, but that just cut out the animal. While that is slightly less worse, maybe quite a bit less worse than actually eating a slaughtered animal, it is still it is still not something that I feel comfortable advocating for. I also do not want more corporate control of our food supply, patentable products and items and proprietary things. I am an advocate of real whole plant foods. So this was not the video that I actually intended to put out this week, so that's been pushed off to next week. But I just, there was so much discussion about this online, I felt like I really had to address this and share my current thoughts with you. So if you enjoyed this, please, this, please give this video a big thumbs up and hit the like button below and that subscribe button. And if you're new here, please hit that bell button so that you'll actually be notified when I release another video next week. See you later.